Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. There's a beautiful picture of you and Steph hugging at a game. Was that at a basketball game you went to watch him play at? Uh, if you remember which one I, I'm, I'm referring to. I should have printed it, actually, but there's a... It, the, I don't know what it is. It's just the connection. Sometimes I show I show my son and my partner yeah. that picture, and it just shows the love between your relationship with him. Um, do you remember which picture I'm referring to? I am trying to think. I, we've taken a couple of pictures... Uh... Um, was it a recent one? It was a few years ago, but you, you're hugging over some rails at a basketball stadium, and it's just a Oh, I think that that's probably against uh, when they... Oh, that was uh, when he... Um, he was definitely back at Davidson for uh, a celebration. Does, yeah. um, does, he ever, does he ever come to your place? Make him dinner? Uh, no, but we do. I mean, when 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 he played uh, uh, against Cleveland, when LeBron, the whole big thing between Warriors and LeBron, we were very fortunate to have lived in Cleveland then. So, mm. uh, oftentimes when he comes, we would we would have time to hang out. Did you go to um, a basketball final? Did you go to the NBA finals and watch him? I did. I went oh. to I went to one or two of those. Yeah, that was uh, that was very pleasant to uh, that was very pleasant to do. Um, but yeah, we would have dinner the night before the game and catch up, but okay. you know, um, but yeah, it, it's just nice to, it's just nice to see how much he's, he's flourished and absolutely obviously he's so big now, his time is very limited. So yeah. we don't, we don't see each other, um, as much, but, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to kind of follow his success story and to know that he's thriving out there and then text messages every now and then we'll, we'll do. That's nice. <laughs> That's really, really nice. It it's nice to hear it from somebody else as well, who has genuinely got a nice uh, relationship yeah, no, think, with somebody. I think, I think he was back at Davidson. I, I I know. I think I know the picture you're talking about, but I'm trying to remember exactly. There was an there was something happening. I think it was either when they was it no when they named the court. Oh, well, I think it might have been no when they retired his jersey. But it was one of those many events where. Uh, where he came back and and we got to we got to catch up a little bit. So I I know I know the picture yeah. you're talking about. I was wearing a black t-shirt. Yeah, I believe you were. Yeah, yeah. So after Davidson, you um, go and play basketball in Europe. Um, just because I know you've got to go, and we had a bit of a mixture with the times. But I want to finish that timeline real mm -hmm. quick. After basketball in Davidson, you went and played basketball in Europe for a, a little bit. Just quickly, where did you play? I played in I played in France. I played in France uh, for a team called Loave, mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to play for a team called Campere. Uh, Loave is in Normandy, and Campere is in 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 Breton uh, or or Brittany yeah. uh, in France. And then um, at that time, I had to have surgery on my left knee, and oh. uh, but when I recovered, I came back to um, I, I went to Switzerland. Uh, and then I came to I came, I played in Switzerland and then went back to France and played for the same uh, the same team and then <clears throat> just kind of hurt my knee uh, hurt my knee again uh, and that was and the, the end, knee was just kind of bothered me I I never had injuries in college I actually felt my felt the pain the first time during my last game I was against St Mary's they had the oh you know him Paddy Mills. Um, oh. Yeah, so uh, it was a game against the uh, Paris Mills team mm -hmm. um, out there that I felt my the 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 pain, and then uh, I decided to come back to the U.S., did my rehab and everything, and uh, and returned to um, and I got drafted by uh, the Springfield Nets. It's like the what what are they called? The Brooklyn Nets. They were the, the G League. That, yeah, the G League team. Mm -hmm. And then got back there again. My knee just yeah, and and that was when I decided to to retire and yeah. or then began my, uh, you know, hey. I had like a one two year phase trying to figure out do I go get an MBA or what do I want to do, and then 
just kind of figured this is kind of the path that I've been called to. This is where God wants me. And mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and so I, I took on the role of working with A2S full time. It's a beautiful way to look. You you know what what I've noticed about this um, episode is it's your beautiful perspective on on life. And you mentioned it before. You always look to the positive, and you really, really do, which obviously leads to a nice, healthy life, doesn't it? And a healthy mindset, which allows you to be free to uh, build what you want to build. Um, what. And what is the future for A2S? Where do you see it going? Where does Andrew Lovedale go from now then? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. I think for us, we, like I said, we're a dynamic organization uh, and, and we are kind of at that phase. We have a three pronged uh, approach to our, um, uh, to, to our growth in the next few years. And, and we've kind of finished phase once uh, the second phase is really, um what we are where we are right now and that's trying to uh to erect a structure called OWA which is an opportunity wellness and advancement center and while we're educating all our kids and we understand that uh Nigeria is projected to to grow uh, mm -hmm. a lot by 2050 so this right. uh was supposed to grow from 219 million to 377 million or thereabout wow. uh and right now uh 70 percent of Nigerians are less than 30 years of age uh, and so when you do when you do the math, you realize that, you know, about 158 million people added in the next 26 years to the population will put pressure on the workforce. It's going to put pressure on infrastructure and, and everything. So uh, we are uh, as an organization, we're trying to be very proactive about how we serve our children. So we're hoping that this next phase of our of our evolution as an organization is going to really allow us restructure our curriculum in a way that really helps our kids uh, develop the skill sets and, and understanding of how to use the tools that will allow them to thrive in an ever-changing landscape, uh, uh, workforce landscape. Um, and then also uh, to, to, to build on that, to create systems that will allow our kids to develop uh, career-wise. So so developing our career development arm of the organization, integrating all of our programs so that so that they can interact and and build a little bit of that continuity in the development of our children. Um, but when people ask me, I just say, really, the next step is that we are going beyond basic needs. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say basic needs, it's that oftentimes when you say we provide 300 meals a day, we provide backpacks, we pay for tuition, uh, when we say we we support kids it seems like that is the result, but that really is not the result. That's the foundation. Yeah, uh, it's agree. the beginning for each child, because I think when you're able to provide those basic needs, it's my child doesn't worry about what he's going to eat or what he's going to wear or whether he's, he's going to go to school. Mm. Right. But there's so many things that we want to build on and it's giving that child the gift of choice. Mm -hmm. um, and it's developing agency in that child so that they, the child understands, okay, this is, I am, I don't want anyone to write my story for me. Mm -hmm. I want to be the one with the pen in my yeah. hand. I want to write my own story the way I want it written and the way I want it to be told. Uh, and then lastly, just really raising godly stewards, godly stewards of their time, their talents and, and their treasures. So, so that's the area that we are, are going into is trying to say it's, it's beyond basic needs. And, and like yeah. I said, I've been, I've been blessed with the gifts of love and consistency, and we want to help our kids pursue that dignified path to success. Uh, and it's going to take going into this next phase of our growth where we can integrate all of our programs, where we can uh, continue to, to build, in, uh, build on our curriculum to ensure that there are career development opportunities for our kids to understand where they want to go um and then ultimately while doing that to ensure that they're developing the agency that they need that they feel like they can make you know i'll say god honoring choices and then ultimately we want to raise godly stewards and and when you're a godly steward you're an amazing leader who has just uh, an amazing deposit of empathy in the mm. way that you approach the world um, yeah. and and that is that is something that we want to prioritize it's a gift that I've been given by many people that I've encountered. And I keep saying, including you, it's not because you're here. It's true because you are no. such a, uh, you're such a part of my story. Everyone that I ever encountered uh, along the way, 
um, has been a blessing, you know, mm -hmm. for for a kid. Sometimes a kid like me could just walk through the doors and and people will ignore the kid. Right. Um, but I was embraced. I was nurtured. Mm -hmm. I was loved on. Uh, I never felt um, I never felt alone. Right. I was that child that people were inviting me home for Easter and people yeah. were checking on me on Christmas. And and like you said, right, we were I still remember going to um, uh, Alan Metcalf's house for Easter. Right. <laughs> like just all the things that we did right with um, everyone. It just seemed like we were all there for each other. Yeah. And and it's truly amazing to see how gifting that to other children gifting that to really every child um is something that we should all pursue um and and it should not have to be tied to the fact i was i was not related to you by blood i was not related to jofoba by blood mm -hmm. but they saw they saw my story they knew that my my dreams and my hopes um mattered and and then they knew that if they invested in me the right way, that maybe I could add value to someone or something someday. And I hope that in the little seeds that we are sowing every day at A2S, that the children that we serve feel the same way that I felt uh, because of the people that I met along the way. Yeah. Oh, I feel like you've already answered it, but I've been, I've been finishing the other episodes with the simple question. It's just a one liner. And you, I feel like you've already answered it, but you've answered it so elo elo eloquently. Um, but if you could put it into one line, what is your purpose? <laughs> My purpose is to really, really honor every encounter. Um, love I, I, I love cherishing my encounters. I, I do believe that if I bump into you on the road, there's a reason why I bumped into you on the mm. road. And I want to cherish that encounter. I'm so glad I made contact with you, Andrew, because it's been such a long time and you always always had a beautiful nature, uh, just a, a nice, calm, respectful personality. And um, you got to come to Australia. Hey, my wife and I, we've talked about it, man. That's one place I've not been. And I really want to I really want to go to Australia. We're talking about continents. We're talking about where we need to go to. And Australia is we've got and my wife selfishly, too, wants to do it because her best friend went backpacking and hiking and all that stuff in Australia and New Zealand. So, mm. um, yeah, we've talked about, we've talked about it definitely. Cause I don't know if you've connected with the guys out there. We had, um, what's his name? Um, Oh, why am I blanking? We had two guys from Australia, Alex Hudson. Yes. Yep. Yep. I do know I, him. I've never connected with him here, but I do know him. I think I heard he's a cop in Australia now. Oh, maybe I don't know. But I do know who you're referring to, yeah. Um, do you remember yeah. Paul? Do you remember a guy? Yeah, Alex Hodgson. Yeah, Alex. Yeah. Who? There's a Paul, a, 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 another guest that I've had on leading our own way, Paul Elderkin. He didn't play at Manchester oh. though. He played uh, up in uh, Middlesbrough way, Newcastle yeah. way, and it was part of yeah. the Newcastle Eagles and things like that. Oh. Uh, no, not Eagles. Uh, well, all those clubs around that area. Yeah. Uh, but we've become quite close here. He 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 was a guest on Leading Our Own Way, and he shared oh, nice. his his story and how he's leading in his own, his own way as well. It was a beautiful, a beautiful journey he's been on. Uh, awesome. a, a sad sad journey, but he's on a beautiful journey now. Um, but yeah, there's a few people out here. Uh, um, uh, also, who played for Magic? Um, oh my God, I've gone blank because I'm on the call to you. I've gone completely blank. He's living in Sydney. We've caught up a couple there's of times. A, there's a girl do you what's her name i forgot her name now she was really good she was from australia she played for joe forber for the mystics yeah i do know who you mean and we've never caught up either <laughs> what her name. i've gone uh, i've gone blank yeah, there, are couple, there are a couple of aussies out there man you need yeah. to connect with them <laughs> well today i'm going to the nba final uh, nbl final of manchester uh not yeah. manchester uh, melbourne united and delhi right. plays on the team and my son i've yeah. also interviewed the commentator for huh. anybody who's not watched the episode, go back to watch that episode. But Melbourne, um, Wayne Peterson is the commentator at yeah. Melbourne United, and he got Drew on the court and got to say a high five to all the players. And Delhi high fived him as he went through. It was beautiful. Oh, you might have seen the video online. I, I put it up. It was amazing. Drew loved it. Drew would obviously love to meet you too because he yeah. he has watched. If I can share this very quickly, he has watched 
the show you were oh, a part he's of. Underrated. He, he has watched <laughs> it. Awesome. Uh, I've watched it a few times because it's such an inspiring journey. And um, it's it's so nice you joined him on his journey as well because you were part of his. Everyone goes on about this, mm. but you were part of his journey as, you, you know, you admire Joe and all these guys, but you were part of what formed him as well. well. I'm, I'm, th I'm thankful to be included. And that speaks volume of Steph because sometimes when these stories are written about stars, they, mm. they're written about themselves, but he made it about community. And, and that says a lot about his, who he is as a person. So yeah. just really thankful to be included. But yes, sir. But yeah, absolutely. And so Drew would have, uh, Drew's still asleep, but because um, yeah. it's uh, 7.30 here in the morning, but he would uh, he would have loved to have met you at some point. So well, please come to Australia. Hello and we will meet someday, that's for sure. Well, we've got a spare room here. So you, yeah, you're, awesome. you're welcome to come and stay here anytime you uh, wish. <laughs> thanks, brother. Great to connect. Thank you so much for all you do. No, no, no. Thank you for what you do. What, I, what I'm doing is nothing compared to what you're doing, you know, uh, no, not even close. Um, I no, just hope you, I can, can help. You can say that, man. It, it's all it's it's all this cord, and they are all pieced together, and yeah. and that's how the true story gets. Uh, that's how this the true story gets uh, gets woven up together. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it all matters, right? Without, it does. Yeah, it all matters. We're all connected in that unique way. So. Yeah, um, I agree. I just, I wanted to create this podcast because I want people to understand whoever's going through some darkness or some really hard times in life. There are other people out there in the world that don't share their journeys often enough, or if they do, the world doesn't get to see them. I believe every, every person's got a story and every story is worth hearing and sharing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm doing the podcast because I want them to see and learn from people like yourself that normal people and people who are struggling or going through the darkness can pull themselves through, you know, through resilience and be empowered and find yes, something sir. in their lives that connects. And yours is Joe, but you now are your own beacon of light to lots and lots and lots of other children. You know, you, you and you're not Joe, but symbolism wise, you, you know, you are Joe yeah. to those children in your eyes, if that makes sense. So yes, I want to yeah. say thank you for joining me on my journey and helping leading our own way be what it is. I hope it can reach a lot of people. I know you do have to go and I'm sorry that you're still on here because I, I know you've got an appointment. No, that's but, okay. Um, What's that an essay? I want them to say hi quickly. Oh, get them on the podcast. Yeah, let me say hi to them. I, I only see them online. Let me say no, hi. Essay? Osas? <laughs> I don't want yes. them to miss a haircut for Nigeria. Andrew too, but he. Hi, Andrew. Oh, hi guys. How are you? Good. I see you guys online all the time, and it's amazing to see you face to face. Are you yeah. going to be a baller like your dad as well? Do you like to play basketball? Yeah. You guys are going to be amazing ballers. Hi. How are you? Good. It's good to see he's you never, face to face. He's never beat me on horse though, so I'm still I'm still winning. So. It's I gonna love be that you lot, don't right? let your children win. Nope. No. <laughs> yep, that's right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. They are adorable. They're go you're going to be tall like your dad. You're going you're to get to 6'10 and beat him, though. Uh, you're going to be tall like me? Yeah? You sure? <laughs> oh, amazing. What a beautiful way to end the podcast. I don't think I can end it any better, Andrew. No, thanks, brother. I'm grateful. No, no, I'm grateful. I really appreciate it. Um, you go, just actually, just quickly, because you're going to Nigeria uh, in a few days. Uh, I know I ended it, but very quickly, tell people what you're doing in Nigeria. Yeah, so I'm actually heading out with my first son in a few days, and we will be hosting a, a two-day workforce development workshop for about 120 um university kids yeah. uh, in Nigeria and and the goal is to really help them start thinking about how to really um showcase their unique strengths and their achievements as they try to you know face employers uh how they can fill the gaps between their education and industry demands uh mm -hmm. just you know some of the gaps that we see uh in 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 a lot of kids who are coming out of school ensuring that these kids uh understanding where these gaps might be and how they can fill it so that they can become, you know, the ideal choice. Um, you know, um, um, and like I said to you earlier, I said to the kids, be too good to be ignored. 
Yeah, I love that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to write that down, you know. To, uh, can, I, can I quote you on my social media with that? Yes, sir. Um, but I, I think that that's the, that's the same thing. Just putting them in a position to be successful so that when, they, when they're able to present themselves before future employers or if they are entrepreneurs and they need to, uh, and they need to sell their brands, uh, that, they are, um, that they are not being passed up that mm. people are going to stop and pay attention because of the value that they provide. Uh, but yeah, so we're doing that for two days and then we have 400 kids from around the country uh, coming to Benin City uh, where we will be running a, a four-day uh, four basketball and empowerment camp. Nice. Um, and, and so I get, to be, uh, I get to be a part of that, but I'm excited because my son gets to be a part of that as well. So, Has he ever been? To Nigeria, he has been. He's been. This will be his third time in. Uh, this will be his third time in Nigeria. Wow! Um, so I think he's going to get to participate in camp for the first time. He wasn't old enough last time, so yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm excited about what this uh, what this will what this will mean for him. But I'm excited for all the kids that we get to pour into uh, while we are there uh, in Nigeria over the course of the uh, of the next week. Yeah, amazing. Uh, yes. Incredible. Absolutely. And I, so many people can get so many things from you on this episode, Andrew. So I really, really appreciate your time. Um, no, thank you. I am very conscious of you needing to go and, and you're already late. Yeah, I'm so I'm sorry. Gonna... Uh, I'm going to end <laughs> yeah, it. That... But you, the quote was, be too good to be ignored. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. I've got it. I'm going to mm -hmm. quote you on social media. Um, uh, thank you so much. No, no, Andrew, thank you so much. Have a great time in Nigeria. Uh, you're doing wonderful Good. things. Keep keep doing it. Um, don't stop. Um, as you know, you you seem like you're a happy man. And uh, let's stay in touch, please. Now, we'll do. Um, and I'll um, I'll keep you posted when we're going to launch Leading Our Own Way. But thank you for joining our journey. Um, oh, thanks. And, and sorry about the mix up earlier. Uh, no, no. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, absolutely. We didn't we didn't know that there was a time difference change in America, and yeah. uh, we lost an hour of the recording. But that's okay because we've got what we needed, and that's what that's what matters. Um, yes, and uh, we knew we were on a tight schedule. So thank you for fitting me into your time. I really yeah. appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. Great catching up. Thank you. Absolutely. Talk what so. a way to catch up. Let's catch up on a normal phone call next time. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait. That'll be great. Thanks. Um, stay on the line. Um, I'm just going to end the recording, but thank you to everybody else who's tuned in for the episode. Um, come back soon to Leading Our Own Way for the next amazing story. Take care, everybody. Have a great week. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way. And we'll get you on next week's episode.